Mm-hmm. All right. Hey, welcome back to the More Than Recovery podcast. We are so glad you're here. Let me encourage you before we get started that maybe it's your first time watching or maybe you've watched several times, but if you haven't subscribed to our channel, we would love for you to subscribe. It helps us to reach more people and let you know that when another uh, episode is released, it pops in and gives you that notification. And just again, just uh, it, it's, it encourages us and it helps us to reach many, many more people. So we're just so glad that you're here today. And uh, today I have a very special guest. I have Mary Foster. And you've seen Robert on here a few times, and and Robert helps me with a lot of these podcasts and these videos. But today I have his wife, who is also my daughter. And if you will congratulate her, they just almost a week and a half ago, they have a brand new baby girl named Hadley, who's behind the scenes right now over here. I think she might be stirring. If you hear her crying in the background, just ignore. Uh, that's what a week and a half, 10 yes. day old baby will do is yep. she will cry when she's and hungry. And sometimes you don't know why. Right. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like you said earlier, sometimes they, they cause their own problems and then they fuss at you because they cause them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I know. So, but uh, I've asked Mary to come today and I have been trying to get Mary for a long time to come on to our show, Um, but schedules haven't worked out. Well, now that she's off for baby time, uh, Mm. we had a free day here, and then uh, Mark uh, graciously texted me the other day and said, hey, I'm in town, let's let's shoot some video. Mm -hmm. So we were able to, it just worked out, right? You know, so God worked this whole thing out, and we're just so glad that we could do that. So really our topic today is going to be is mental health right and and we had this discussion a little while ago mary and i were about how do we want to approach this topic of of mental health and and really i kind of come at it as mental health in the church addressing mental health in the church um and i for many many years um to talk about mental health and the issues in the church was almost kind of taboo, right? It it was almost this idea that if you struggled with depression, if you struggled with anxiety, if you struggled with any of these things, that the reason you did that was because you were in sin. It was kind of the Job syndrome, right? You're having these problems because you're not walking with, with God, right? And I often say that the Bible is is a mental health book because the Bible, first of all, tells us it tells us a how to um, enter into a relationship with God through His Son Jesus Christ and His death, burial, and resurrection, and that is a decision, a personal decision that we must make for our own personal salvation. Nobody can make that decision for you. But then the rest of the Bible really is from that point. After salvation, it's all about, okay, it's the renewing of the mind. It's all about thinking. And thinking is the central part of, of mental health. And it's how we think. Um, it's how we view things. It's how we approach things. Um, and the Bible is, spends a great deal of time addressing how we're to think about things, how we're to address things. And it tells us, the Bible tells us that it's not going to be easy, that there's going to be tough times and that our thinking can get messed up. And then this is how to correct that, that thinking. And and so mental health is, is, is a large part of, of God's plan, isn't it? So, so Mary, you know, as Mary was, and I told her I would kind of guide this conversation, um, like all, like all teenagers, right? Years ago, Mary is now, 25. 25. Yes. I had to think too because I, I just I'm turned like, wow, 25. time goes by so fast. 25 years old, just turned 25 last yeah. month. And, um, but when she was about 15, like most teenagers, she went through a real rough patch in her mental health um, journey as we mm-hmm. all do. You know, we often say teenage years are tough years for, for anybody, right? And so Mary, when you were about 15 years old, you did have a time there where you were really had a, 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 a dark time mm-hmm. with mental health. Mm-hmm. So yeah. you want to talk about that just a little bit. Again, yeah. you don't have to go into great mm. detail. So. so pretty much I was diagnosed with OCD, which is obsessive compulsive disorder, but it's not like the type that you think of when, you know, people are 
neat or they have to do things like a certain amount of times, like obsessively. Right. This is more like of wash like, their hands over right, and over yeah. or, or count something yeah, over and over. Right. Yeah. So this was more of like obsessive intrusive thoughts that were infiltrating my mind. Um, very sui suicidal, homicidal, just I didn't, I didn't really know. I was confused because I know that a lot of people that do struggle with stuff like this come from, you know, rougher backgrounds right you know broken families not saying that that's all people right 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 but yep. you know i think you were confused too because you were like i don't understand like you have such a stable household you know you, well even the psychiatrist even, yeah. even the doctors were <laughs> yeah. the doctors were the same way the doctors were like well you have a stable home <laughs> you have you parents have, that aren't divorced. You have parents that are together. <laughs> yeah. You haven't had any major disruptions in right. your life that would be the typical pattern right. that they would see of a teenager coming in to right. see them that were struggling with these issues. Yeah. So I think that was right. everybody's kind of going, what's going on right. here? Right, right. <laughs> yeah. And then we did later come to find out that it was a chemical imbalance, um, but also it was caused by strep, Yeah, which is yeah, there, even a greater topic that we yeah, take it's, it forever to... It's interesting that there was yeah. a, you know, again, we go back to the Bible says that we're spirit, soul, and body. And they yeah. all, we talked to, in our last few podcasts, we talked about some of that, how the body and the soul and the spirit are, uh, they work together mm -hmm. and, and to make yeah. us who we are. They're not separate. They're separate, but they're interactive, if you right. will, you know? And so, yeah, it is so... Um, there, there can be a relationship from the strep virus yeah. to, to serotonin. the brain, right? Yeah. And it related to serotonin that, that, that strikes up this chemical, almost cocktail that causes people to, mm -hmm. uh, enter into this obsessive compulsive disorder right. type of, right. yeah. So, and I think it took us a while for us to figure that out. And thankfully we did have a psychiatrist who was like, very proactive about making sure that we did every test in the book yeah. to make sure that right. we co we covered all of our bases. And yeah, it was yeah. that at that point that we found out that that's what was causing all of this. Yeah. And, yeah. And, dry, yeah. And, and with that, you know, with, with the OCD, with the depression, yeah. with the anxiety, with the, um, uh, many other things, yeah. you know, uh, that went along with that. I would say guilt. Guilt, yeah, because yeah. it, it, it's interesting how you you carried a lot of guilt, yeah, over things that you had no control over, right? You know, yeah, and, and for us as parents, you know, it's interesting because this is the field I work in, but when it's your own child. Um, and it becomes emotional, you, you've you mm -hmm. got to call in outside help too. So yeah. it's not like that I could just say, oh, I know I know about these things. <laughs> yeah. No, I had to call in outside help because once the emotional connection happens, it's your child, right? Mm -hmm. You can make irrational decisions. You can look at things irrationally because of the emotions that that get in there for, for us. But I think also your, your hands were also tied because you were told if you didn't get me help that you oh would yeah lose yeah custody of right me. right well no yeah no <laughs> yeah. no yeah we knew that yeah. um, you know we knew that when we went to the doctor and 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 you had admitted to the doctor that you were having suicidal ideations yeah. right that at that point yeah there you you have to you have to enter into legally you have to enter into the hospital right, right? right. and I know that's a tough decision. Yeah. Right? Well, because I, I remember being so mad at you because you told me, I'm not going to let them admit you. I'm not going to let them admit you. And then they admitted, they you. admitted you. And I was like, he told me that he would not let them do that. Right. 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 Yeah. Yep. And and again, you know, yeah. sometimes we say things in the moment that we don't fully understand right. at that point. Yeah. So, yeah. But it, it was a journey and it and, and it's a journey that really I think, Mary, you would say that even today. Mm -hmm. Right, ten years removed from the yeah. situation, that that mental health it, and it's for any of us. It all just it hits us differently, right? It does. There's yeah. things you still struggle with, mm -hmm. right? There's things yeah. that you still we. Uh, there's things I struggle with. Um, it, 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 we're all we're all different in how we struggle and what we struggle with, right? And I think as like humanity as a whole, whether you want to admit it or not, everyone struggles with either some form of anxiety, depression, mental health. I mean, 
Yep. You may not think you do, but you do. You do. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. nobody, if you don't have it all together, if you're right. looking at me, you, I'm looking at you, you yeah. don't have it all together. Yeah. If yeah. you say you do, you're lying. You yeah. don't have it all together. Yeah. And if you're not struggling, then you're, if you're not struggling, then you're in heaven. Right. And so yeah. you're not going to be listening to yeah. this podcast. <laughs> yeah. So if you're not struggling with something at some point, at some time, yeah. right, you know, the, the, the any victory, any victory we're going to gain always starts in 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 our thinking. Mm-hmm. It always starts in our thinking. You cannot control the very first thought that comes to your Mm-mm. mind, but you can control what you do with it. You can control the second thought yeah. that comes to your mind, and you can control what you do with those yeah. thoughts, right? But nobody can control that very first thought that hits them in whatever the situation is that then causes and then you take that thought and you continue with it Mm -hmm. right you continue down that path with it and that's the Mm -hmm. danger and that's where a lot of us struggle is we let that first thought take Mm -hmm. us down the road uh to a place it shouldn't take us versus understanding that first thought i don't have control over but but that second thought and what i do with those thoughts Mm -hmm. is what i have control over and as a 15 year old yeah (laughs) that's tough it is it is because I think also you're in high school you're trying to fit in you're trying to you want everybody to like you and then you get admitted into a mental health hospital and your friends find out and they're like what's wrong with her she's a weirdo (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah (laughs) so (laughs) but I cannot tell you the number of people that came to me down the road shortly after that came to me about their own children Mm -hmm. and said to me, well, I don't want to say anything. Right. But our child struggles with with the same thing. And that's... But we don't want to talk about it to anybody. And that's really sad that they feel... They cover it up. That they cover it up. Yeah. And I think too, and I'm not trying to open a can of worms, but I think COVID didn't didn't help didn't help no that. certainly certainly yeah, not no I it, 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 it isolated <laughs> yeah. no the, the worst thing we did during covid was shut things down yeah you may disagree with that but yeah we made this solution was worse than the right than the and disease. i think more people came yeah. out about their struggles during that time because they were yeah. isolated and all they had time to do was think yeah yeah so yeah and and again you know that's a whole nother topic here yeah but, you know again yeah uh, share my private thoughts yeah. here uh <laughs> If you trust government, you're trusting the wrong people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever government says to do, do the opposite. <laughs> so but no, you we won't did go down have, that road. You did yeah. have a lot of people come to you in the church and even outside of church that were just like, I'm afraid to say something because I don't know how this is going to be. I had missionary families. Yeah. Coming. You, met, you know, you have people who were on the mission field with their, you know, with their yeah. team and telling me, coming to me saying, hey, this is what's happened with yeah. my son, with my daughter. But we were too ashamed to tell anybody. Right. And I thought to myself, wow, that's really, that's sad. And I it think is. we we tend to do that in the church sometimes, mm-hmm. though. We tend to, because we accuse people of being in sin mm-hmm. if they have some type of a mental health yeah. struggle. And that's and that's that's what the Bible is all about. It's right. about this 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 battle that goes on in our minds mm-hmm. right because yeah. it's the renewing of the mind yeah. that god is looking to affect after salvation there's salvation that changes my eternal destiny mm-hmm. and then here on this earth there's a change of thinking that then changes my behavior to make me more like god on mm-hmm. this earth and so there's going to be a mental health battle as I'm transitioning from thinking like the world yeah. to thinking like God. And and as teenagers, you know, and really if we could just say to parents of teenagers right now or just parents in general, the teenage years are hard and they're harder. They're even harder today than they were 10 years ago. And I think that has a lot to do with social media um, living up to a standard that they are never able to reach. Yeah. Because... I think what? Instagram and TikTok and Facebook give this preconceived notion of what you're supposed to look like and what you're supposed right. to be like. And Every, everybody puts on social media yeah. a message, a false me- a, a so- facade. Right, social yeah. media. So there's the message. There's the message of social media, mm-hmm. which is the message you choose to put out there. Right. Right. The message that says, "Look at me. Everything's great. Look what I have. Look what I'm doing." Mm-hmm. 
but nobody's ever putting on there the struggles. Mm-hmm. Rarely, you know. But and mo- if they do, they're attacked by right. They're atta- you know <laughs> right. They're attacked yeah. by everybody. <laughs> but it's, so there's yeah. the message of social media, mm-hmm. right? And then there's the the social media itself. The um, the uh, what's the word I'm, I'm looking for here? It's the the physic the physicality of social media. What yeah. what um what the what the lighting of social media the 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 blue light of mm-hmm. social media if you will on our phones mm-hmm. and and on our pads our 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 tablets right yeah. that lighting that disrupts sleep because let's be honest our teens are using and keeping their phones with them at mm-hmm. night up and they're it's disrupting it's disrupting their circadian rhythm yeah it's disrupting their sleep patterns it's disrupting their ability to think clearly mm-hmm. because of those things it's disrupting all of those things um and it, it not only causes mental problems but it causes physical, physical problems yeah. especially as it disrupts the circadian rhythm yeah. of our especially in our teenagers i think i heard that it takes two hours for your brain to come down from that after. right after yep. So if you're on your phone and you go to bed right after that, it's going to take you two hours for your brain to actually come out of that. Yeah, you don't. And if you do yeah. go into sleep, it's not very good no, sleep. No, it's not. And then if you awake during the night, you wake up two or three in the morning, what's the first thing people do? They grab their phone and they start scrolling. And the yeah. next thing you know, they're up for an hour. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, and, and for, again, for our children, it is, so there's the message of social media that's, that's hurting us mentally. Mm -hmm. Um, And then there is the physical aspect of social media, the lighting and Mm -hmm. all of those things that are disrupting the circadian rhythm of our bodies. And over a short time, uh, there's some negative effect, but over a long Mm -hmm. periods of time, there's medical evidence to suggest that it causes some level of diabetes, it causes mental health issues, so it causes both physical and mental problems in us. And boy, you couple that with the isolation that social mm-hmm. media causes, um, the disconnect that social media causes. Um, you got to shut your phone off at least 30 to 45 minutes before bedtime yeah. and not look at it. And that's a and struggle that's hard, for anybody because we're all <laughs> yeah. doing we're all doing it. Yeah. I know, I know. You know, how many of us fall asleep with the TV on? I, I don't, but many people right. have to have the TV on to fall asleep yeah. at night. And they're not really sleeping that well. Um, right. Because that light, that, that 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 lighting is still in there. And uh, yeah. But I will say that Instagram does a great job because they have this algorithm. And once you look at your phone, you're sucked in because they yeah. know how to oh, capture. Yeah. <laughs> they know how to capture, you know. <laughs> they count on you. Yeah. Remember, Facebook. Uh, yeah. Instagram, all that. They just provide the platform. They're counting on you yeah. to make it go. Yeah. Right. They want you and me. They want yeah. us to succeed. YouTube wants us yeah. to <laughs> succeed in their in their way. Right. right. We are their, their cattle. We're the yeah. we're the money makers. They want us to succeed. So they're going to create the algorithms yeah. and the platforms to that we can succeed in drawing people in. That's yep. the whole design behind it yep. is they're just providing the platform and then they're counting yep. on us to make it succeed. <laughs> and in that, it, there's a lot of negativity yeah. that occurs. So, yeah, I mean, we could spend a lot of time, Mary, talking about, you know, mental health issues. But I just mm-hmm. wanted to give you a chance to kind of mm-hmm. just express a little bit. Um, you know, your struggles, mm-hmm. not, we're not, we're not going into great detail. We could go into a lot of detail here, you know, yeah. about, you know, dealing with that and, and the things that we learned and maybe that's for another time. Um, but, uh, this is just an opportunity to, to encourage parents, to encourage teenagers, to encourage Christians, people, mm-hmm. there's no shame admitting that you're struggling mentally. Right. It's <laughs> It's it's not sinful to say I'm struggling. It's not sinful to struggle. Well, and when I think we're about, growing, we're struggling, we're going to have problems. Yeah, I think about, you know, there's a prime example in scripture of when Jesus is in the garden and he's sweating yeah. drops of blood. And scientifically, like you have to be to a point where you're so anxious that your body starts to sweat drops of blood. I yeah. don't remember the term yeah, for it. Yeah, yeah. But um, I mean, that's a prime example in scripture of we see Jesus himself who was anxious and he even asked like, yeah remove this from me because yeah. 
take I don't want. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah. So Jesus example is what he says. Uh, I, I have a problem right, right. now. I have a, I'm struggling, but he takes that problem where he takes it to, to the father. Right. Right. He takes that problem to the father and the father comforts him. Mm-hmm. And, and sometimes w- in our struggles, we're chasing wrong solutions to yeah. our mental health problems. Yeah. We're and self-medicating. So, yeah. I don't have, I am not opposed at it. Any way, shape or form am I opposed to doctor led, doctor prescribed medication to deal with mental health issues as long as it also involves counseling. Yeah. If your doctor is only prescribing you medicine and that's it, you need a new doctor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, yeah. They're, they're not helping you. They're just mad. You may as well, you're just masking a problem. That's yeah. all you're doing. You, it's got to be coupled with, with counseling, with therapy. Exercise. Uh, exercise. Yeah. It's got to be coupled with exercise. It's got to be coupled with a number of things. Mm-hmm. But if it's just medication and that's it, yeah. you got to find a new doctor um, because you'll be doing this your whole life. And that's not the, Mm -hmm. the, you shouldn't be struggling with mental health problems like that your whole life. It's not, that's not what God intended. But also, you know, God, the father did not remove that from him. No. And sometimes he chooses not to do. Right. He didn't remove it. No, he, but he, but he, but he, but he comforted him. Right. Yep. And sometimes you can ask God and sometimes the answer is no. Yeah. But he will. Yeah, but he, he will, will comfort, comfort you That's in right. that moment. He will comfort you. He will give you a way through it. Yeah, not out of it. Um, and 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 through it, he'll strengthen you through it, so you become better. Better. Yeah. Right. If I self medicate, then I don't learn the lesson, and I don't become better. Right. And so the issue is, sometimes our mental health issues are there for us with the body of Christ, with our doctor, mm-hmm. with counseling to push through it, mm-hmm. not avoid it, right. not mask it, not, not ignore it, not lie about it and say, we're fine. Yeah. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. That's what we do in the church. We're fine. How are you today? Oh, I'm good. Yeah. No, you, yeah. <laughs> and there's, and it, it, I, 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 I learned about somebody just yesterday that I was shocked yeah. that, that they were going through what they were going through. But if you ask them, they're fine. Right. right? So anyway, we could go on and yeah. on and on, Mary, but thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. And uh, if you have any questions for Mary and uh, for me, you can visit us at www.nextstepmen.org. Do not forget, please, please subscribe to our channel, share our channel out. We would love to hear from you and to interact with you as well. Thank you so much for taking just this time to be with Mary today and congratulate her and Hadley and Robert on uh, <laughs> on this new baby as they uh, try to get some sleep. Yes. <laughs> it's been tough. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Have a great day.